So ang message ko today, you know, is uh, dinisign po para sa ating lahat, especially sa mga first timers, okay? Uh, I just want to say na those of you who received that certificates, wag na wag niyo pong iwawala iyan. Kasi pag kayo nag-for good sa Pilipinas at naghanap kayo ng church na may vision, na same vision with us, yung pong certificate niya, just present to the pastor and you will not be uh, included in their trainings. Kasi tapos ka na. Okay? So more than 7,000 churches mo sa Pilipinas ay nagpapatrain ng ganyan. So kung meron kang hawak na certificate na ganyan pag uwi mo ng Pilipinas, at pumasok sa church, hindi ka na dadaan sa training nila because tapos ka na. Sabi po ba? We are doing this training for God's glory. Po? Kaya po, itago niya mga certificate. Huwag niyo po baliwalain yung mga certificates na yan. Powerful po yan. May dumarating yung mga tao dito na galing ng Pilipinas, pinakita na ko ng certificate, wala na silang training. Tapos na. Tama ba? So, don't, don't uh, just ignore that certificate. It's very important. Okay? So, let's proceed to our word of God. Okay? I want you to read this. Pero ba tayo leader? Pakibasa nga po. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana. And the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Okay. So, definitely most of you know this story. Tama? Alam niyo na itong story ang to, most of you. Ito yung time that Jesus, listen, that Jesus did his first miracle sa Bible. Okay? Ito yung unang-una na ang Panginoon is gumawa ng miracle. At sa sabi dito, on the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Now, both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. Say, invited. Invited. I want you to take note that Jesus was invited in this wedding, okay? And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And then Jesus said to her, woman, Si Jesus lang po nakatawag sa kanyang nanay ng woman na ina-accept ni Mary. Nanay po, hindi pwede tawagin ng woman. Okay? Si Jesus lang yon At sa Bible po, hindi niya tinawag na mother si Mary. Take care of this. Take note, lalo sa mga first time. Si Mary po is ginamit lang na ilabas si Jesus. Kaya ang tawag niya kay Mary is woman lang palagi. Kahit yung nakapapo niya siya sa cross, tinawag sa ni John. Tinawag niya si John, John, take care of this woman. Okay ba tayo rin? Okay? So, ang ministry ni Mary is dalit lang si Jesus ilabas sa lupa. Okay? Yun po yun. Malito tayo rin, ha? So, what does your concern have to do with me? Nung lumapit po si Mary, when Mary approached Jesus, there was a problem. Mary noticed that there was a problem in the wedding. At sabi niya, my hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. So, the Lord has given me revelations here. So much revelations. Kung number one, kung Jesus, Paul is an Jesus, he has a great purpose why he, has, he, he was here on earth. Tama? There is a big mission that he needs to do. And this is the first time that he did this miracle. Marami siyang miracle na ginawa sa Bible. He knows that. But this is the first time that he will perform a miracle. And see, Mary, when, he, when she noticed that there is no wine, what is it so business to say to Jesus that there is no wine? They were just a guest. Hello? Amen. Kapag ba umatin ako ng kasalan, guest ako, then wala na silang handa. Problem ako ba yun? Problema ko, hindi. No. Hindi ko problema yun. I was just a guest. So, problema na mga nagpakasal yun. Tama? But Mary has a heart to tell Jesus that in that wedding, they run out of wine. And wine during those days was very important. Okay? Kapag po sa panahon ni Jesus, sa Biblia po, padag ba sa ka, in those days, but if there was some wedding, uh, they're, they're preparing it uh, more preparation will do, uh, will happen because 
Uh, ang festivities ng wedding sa Bible during those days is one week. One week po yung, uh, one week yung festivities na wedding. So dito po, it's impossible that there is a wedding and wine is running out. And wine is a very important part of any event sa Bible ng mga panahon na Lalo na sa wedding. Tama? And very important po yung wine. Kasi luxury yung wine. I want you to take of it. Luxury yung wine. Then, and sabi ni, Je sabi ni Jesus sa kanya, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. But notice this. Notice something. Mary, when Jesus says that, He just turned her back and said to the servants, Come on people, are you ready to, do, to, to experience miracle? Amen. Whatever He says to you, do it. Did you notice something there? Jesus says, this is not my time. And Mary turned and then said to the servants, Whatever He says, do it. Pero ka napansin doon? Pag-usapan natin yan, yung story niya. Diyan tayo ni Diyan, mga kapatid. Okay, so as I said earlier, now, most of you know that Jesus turned the water available in this occasion to a finest wine. Kung nabasa niya, at sabi ng mga bisita, the visitors and the guests says, this is the finest wine that I ever taste in my life. Tama? Yun yung pinaka-gabes na wine na na Tikma nila, when all the water on that occasion was turned to be a wine. Ginawa ni Jesus yun. Nagbira kayo siya. Now, gusto kong tignan ninyo, I want you to notice, okay, that this event that Jesus did, the first miracle, He was not in the church, He was not in the synagogue, He was not inside a evangelism, are you with me? He did it inside a wedding event. And I will tell you, another thing. The first miracle of Jesus was not raising a dead back to life, healing someone sick, taking out demons from someone's body. Are you with me? The first miracle of Jesus did was providing something in a group of people. Which is, kung titi mo mabuti, isip yung mabuti, unang-unang miracle ng Panginoon to. Bakit? Walang malang pinagali? Walang malang pinalaya sa demonyo? Which is, ito yung usual niya ginawa sa Biblia? Tama? Ayun yung Biblia? Walang malang binuhay na patay samantalang itong ginagawa niya sa Bible? Yun ang ginawa niya ng miracle? So, what is the, what is the importance of our lesson for tonight? For today, for this morning? Okay? So, gusto ko pong isipin niya. Tignan niyo mabuti ang revelation na ibinigay sa atin ang Lord for this. The first ever miracle of Jesus from the Bible is providing something for a group people, of, of people. Na kung isipin natin, in this particular story, isang bagay na hindi naman talaga kailangan ng tao. Hindi necessity. Kasi ang tao meron mabuhay na walang wine, pero hindi ka pwede mabuhay na walang tubig. But he turned the water into wine. Hello, are you with me? Listen. Bakit ang isang Jesus, sa halip na magbigay ng something necessity sa tao, sa group ng mga tao yun, ang ginawa niya, yung necessity, ginawa niya luxury. What is important? Luxury or necessity? Necessity. Necessity. You can live without wine, but you cannot live without water. Amen. Are you with me? You cannot ever ever live without water. But Jesus, instead of wine, making a water, He made the water to wine. Hello? Are you with me? So, alam niyo po ba na ang water is hindi ka pwede mabuhay ng wala yan? Amen. Water is a necessity. Water is a requirement in life. Isang bagay na ipagdarasal mo sa Diyos na magkaroon ka. Because so many people in the world doesn't have a fine water that they can take, they can drink. Tama? Maraming mga lugar sa mundo na walang tubig na mainom na malinis. Pero ito si Jesus nag-provide ng something, inalis yung necessity at ginawang luxury yung request ng mga tao na by the way, na nandoon. Hello, 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 hello. hello. Is there anybody out here that will pray for God for a wine? No. Pero 
sa inyo nagigising sa umaga at sabihin ko, Lord, bigyan mo ako ng wine. Okay. <laughs> Walang ganun, tama? Adios. Pero alam niyo ba na si Pastora, she needs to take a bottle of wine in three months. Alam niyo ba yun? Kasi po, meron siyang uh, heart uh, Uh, nabuksan yung puso niya at advice ng doktor na kailangan makainom siya ng wine. Ito po, in three months, laging three months, dapat makainom siya ng wine po. Because good for heart. Ang wine po is good for heart. Ito po. So now, I said earlier that this is the first ever miracle of Jesus. And I want to tell you all, again, that wine is a luxury. Now, gusto ko pong dinan dito ngayon. Ang Jesus po na kilala ko is magpo-provide ng something na necessity sa buhay ko. So what does it mean? Ang isang Jesus, it says that He has waited or He has wasted His power just to create something na hindi naman kailangan. Tama? At ito yung first ever miracle ni Jesus sa Biblia. Na hindi naman talaga kailangan ng tao pero ito parang inubos niya lang yung power niya, yung kanyang divinity binigay niya sa isang grupo ng mga tao na gusto lang mag-inom. Tama? So what is the what is the revelation for me here? But before that, today I would like to talk to you about faith. I would like to talk to you about faith. Isang bagay na importante, lalo lalo na sa mga first time or natin yun. Faith, forsaking all, I trust Him. And today we will talk about immovable faith. Ano yung isipin na immovable faith? Unsafable faith. Yung isang pananampalataya na hindi uuga. Isang pananampalataya na pwede, kahit na anong mangyari sa buhay mo, hindi ka matitidal. Are you with me? Faith is something that you need for you to be able to run your life properly. Faith is something that you need if you want to go to heaven. Faith is something that you need in this life. Without faith, you are nothing. Amen. Before, I do not have a faith. Nung ako nagsisimba pa doon sa church kung saan ako lumaki, hindi ko alam kung ano kayo, ako Roman Catholic po ko. Lumaki ako doon sa church na yun, akala ko may faith ako. Pero pag may tumating ka problema sa akin, halos ikamatay ko. Remember, brothers and sisters, mga anak, your faith will not be tested if your life is okay. Amen. Your faith will be test tested if you are here in this country and six months, one year, you don't have work. Amen. And you are working without salary. Amen. And you are here busy pizza without any work that is coming to you. Amen. Tell me if you have the faith. Show me who you are. Kasi pag okay ka lang, feeling mo mo faith ka talaga. Pero pag wala ka ng trabaho, tatawag pa si nanay mo, may sakit yung anak mo, na-hospital yung tatay mo, na-accident yung kapatid mo, late ang sweldo mo, tingnan natin yung faith mo. Yung tinatawag yung faith. So today, when I just speak today, uh, to you, about faith. Yung immovable faith. Yung hindi lang basta-basta faith. Tama? Hindi lang basta pala ng palataya. Can we close our eyes? Father in heaven, today, we would like to uh, ask for your presence. For your Holy Spirit to lead us, kayo po Lord na pagsalita ngayong umaga for us to 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 know the revelation of your word in this specific story that you have given us. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will open up our spiritual eyes and ears, our heart for us to to take the word as practical as it is for us to really understand what is your message to us. Lord God, you said to your word that faith comes from hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. And the word of God is your word. So this morning, Lord God, we ask you, Lord, to lead us, to be our speaker. Gamitin niyo lang po ako, Panginoon, as your servant. A blessing of blessing for everyone. And we will claim the victory, Lord, as we speak about you, about your purpose in our life. And why faith is important in our life. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone will say, Amen. Amen. Okay, so in this story, listen to this. The first thing that I would like to tell you about the key for a movable faith is, number one, your dreams are as important as your needs. How many of you have a dreams in this life? Amen. Since you have mga dreams, di ba? Lahat tayo nangangarap. At sabi natin, ang pangarap is libre. Kaya pag nangarap ka, lakihan mo na. 
Amen. Meron bang nag-dreams na ang Lord, bigyan mo ako ng pang-Lord bukas. Gusto kong tumawag. Kapatid, ang baba naman ang dreams mo. Kung mag-dreams ka rin lang, lakihan mo na. Because ang Diyos natin is malaking Diyos na kaya ng trubay ng kailangan mo. You just need that immovable faith for you to help your dreams come true. Are you with me? Alam niyo, sabi mo kanina, pag wala ng Bible, the Bible contains all the promises of God in our life. Okay? Lahat ng promises ng Diyos nakasulat sa Biblia. At kapag wala ka nito at hindi ka nagbabasa nito, wala kang ikiklaim ng promises ng Diyos. Kaya tayo tumatatag sa buhay na to. Wala kang trabaho, grabe, isang taon na. Meron tayo mga kapatid dito, more than a year na walang trabaho. Pero hindi sila sumusuko. Why? Because they know the promises of God. Amen. Kung wala kang promises ng Diyos, wala kang gagawin kundi mag-inom. Inom dito, inom doon. Kasi ang dami yung problema. Are you with me? Hihingi ka ng panig sa kaibigan mo na sasabihin sa iyo, may pampunutan sa bahay. Pumunta ka roon, mag-inom man tayo. Tapos yung problema mo. Ngayon lang. Eh di na bukasan, yung problema ba na-solve? Ganun tayo noon. Babuti na lang, hindi na ngayon. Amen? Amen. At yung dreams natin, yung pangarap mo sa buhay, kung titignan mo si Lord, parang ang gusto niya lang ibigay siya yung needs mo. Listen to this. God can also provide your dreams. Amen. Pwede niya rin ibigay ang lahat ng dreams mo sa buhay mo nito. Amen. Provided that you have that immovable faith in Him. God is the creator of the universe. Even your life. Everything that you have comes from Him. Kailangan lang ng faith na matindi para yung gusto mo mangyari sa buhay mo. Mangyari! Amen ba? Are you listening to me? Kaya tayo hindi natin makamit yung dreams natin na gusto ibigay ng Diyos sa'yo. Kasi yung faith mo malagnaw. Tama? And besides, lalapit ka lang sa Kanya. Yun? Kapag may kailangan ka. Pag wala kang kailangan, hindi ka pupunta sa church. Mas gusto mo magtulog kasi Friday masarap matulog. In fact, marami tayong kakilala rito. Na nung dumating visit visa, pray dito, pray doon, atin dito, atin doon, na nagkatrabaho niyo mo na mahagilap. Tama? They don't even know that the job they have, pinag-pray natin yun. Ngayon na nakakita ng trabaho, naging dahilan pa yung trabaho para mawala siya. Yun, no? Tama? Sabihin ko po sa inyo, kahit na busy ka, kahit na may paso ka, iba yung gusto mo kumaten. Maraming dahilan kapag ayaw. Maraming paraan kapag gusto. Tama? And yung dreams na gusto ng Diyos na ibigay sa'yo, itetas yung puso ko muna bago mo nyari yan. Hindi, hindi niya ibibigay yan hanggat hindi natetes ang puso mo. Tama? Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Now, listen. Your dreams are as important as needs. Needs is your water. Dreams is your last sabi na gusto mo, which symbolizes the wine that you make. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Pwede niya namang gawin yung wine to water. Pero ngayon yung sabihin dito, kung ikaw is my faith sa Panginoon, at ikaw is diretso na lumalakad sa kanyang presensya, sa kanyang, sa pananampalatay mo sa Diyos, kahit na yung dreams mo, bukod sa needs mo, kaya yung invite. Amen. Kaya yung bigay niyo pati. Kailangan ko lang yung forsaking all I trust in. If you believe that Jesus, or God, is the creator of the universe, what else He cannot provide you? Amen. Ano pa yung hindi niya kaya ibigay sa'yo? Amen. Tama? Amen. What is the secret? As he was invited in the wedding, you should invite him in your life. Amen. Tama? Amen. Hindi mo mabwede na ang Diyos makagalaw sa buhay mo, kundi mo siya ini-invite sa buhay. Alam niyo po, ang Diyos is very gentleman. He will not ever ever come into your life if you don't want. Because wala namang mawawala sa Kanya. Kung ayaw mo sa Diyos, wala namang mawawala sa Kanya. Pero kung gusto mo, for sure, hindi siya tatanggi na pasukin ang buhay mo. If you allow Him to come into your life and start a relationship with Him, doon magsisimula yung dreams mo na ipoprovide niya. Tama ka na ba 
dreams mo. Gusto kong magkaroon ng malaking bahay. Gusto kong magkaroon ng maganda sakyan. Gusto kong magtatapos ang mga anak ko ng pag-aaray. Gusto ko na meron akong magandang trabaho. Yun yung mga dreams mo. Tama? Amen. And would you believe that Jesus can provide it? Amen. Bukod sa needs mo. Amen. Are you with me? Like yung sinasabi, yung needs at saka wants magkaiba. Meron kang needs na kailangan mo. Meron kang wants lang na totally, kahit wala yun, pwede. Amen. Tama ba? Kasi gusto mo lang. Amen? Amen. Halimbawa, sira na yung pang-office ng trabaho. Nakabalat, nakabalat ka sa patos. Nasira na. Merong sale. Jordan shoes. Bibili mo ba yun? Hindi mo naman needs yun. Ang needs mo, sa patos ng pang-office. Amen. Saan mo lang po, mga kapatid? Tama? Amen. So, iba yung needs at saka wants. Pero pag nasa Panginoon ka, even your wildest dreams, and provide by God. Amen. Tanda niyo pa lagi yan. Yun ang number one. You just have to need, have to, you just need to have an unshakable faith in Him. Yung tinatawag na an immovable faith. Immovable faith. Yung, po, yung hindi natitinag na pananampalataya. Yung po, tanda niyo, Jesus is interested just not to meet your needs, but to meet your wants. Kapag ang Panginoon nakita ka na ikaw is talagang inalay mo yung buhay mo sa Kanya, binigay mo lahat para sa Kanya, yung laman ng utak mo, talagang siya lang ang concentration mo, even your wildest wants will be given to you. Subok na natin ang Panginoon, mga kapatid. Subok na natin yan. At yan, lagi din subok lang ang Panginoon sa buhay mo because of the faith na meron ka. Dahil yung pananampalataya, because of your faith, sabi din yun, you will be healed. Amen. Lahat ng pinagaling ni Bible na, na, sa Bible ng Panginoon is hindi niya sinabi ako ng pagaling. Lagi niya sabi, because of your faith, because of your faith, you are healed. Amen. Dahil sa pananampalataya mo, gagaling ka. Dahil sa pananampalataya mo yung trabaho darating. Amen. Dahil sa pananampalataya mo yung mga anak mo makakatapos. Dahil sa pananampalataya mo, God can provide whatever you did in this life. Amen. And that is because of your immovable faith, mga kapatid. Hello, are you with me? Amen. Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, manampalataya na tayo. Manampalataya na tayo. Manampalataya ka na. Amen? Are you with me? You just need to invite Him in your life. Amen. And then you know, once you invite Jesus in your life, the more you are close to Jesus, the more that your dreams will come true. Amen. Because He's the one who can provide. Not your father, not your mother, not even the manager of your company. Only Jesus can provide your needs. Yeah. Nothing else. Ano yung buhay niya ibinigay sa cross para mamatay sa'yo? Ano pa yung hindi na kaya ibigay? Trabaho? Simple lang yan. Faith lang. Laban lang, kapatid. Sabi nga ni Brother John. Laban lang tayo. Habang lumalaban ka, yung faith mo hindi natitinag. Matatag ka. Because you are well versed from the Bible. Tama ba? Kaya mahina ang tao eh. Kaya may naglalasay, nagpapakamatay, hindi makaya, nagbigti na lang, tumalun sa building. Bakit? Punong-puno ng problema sa buhay, ulang ang faith. But if you have that immovable faith with you, whatever happened, whatever consequences sa meron ko sa buhay mo, ano pang pinagdadaanan mo, kapatid? Dahil kilalang ang Diyos, dadaanan mo lang yan, hindi mo tatambayan. Tama? Kaya bumibigit ang problema kasi tinatambayan natin. Dahanan mo lang. Give it to Him. Amen. Kaya nga siya, Diyos eh. Ba't mo sinosolo? Bigay mo sa Kanya. And when you pray, when you give it to Him, just leave it. Iba, nag-pray na. Panginoon, 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 dalawang oras na pray. Pagkatapos mag-pray, iyak na iyak. Binigay mo lang nga kayo, Lord, ba't umiiyak ka pa? Just let Him do it for you. That is faith. Tama? Yun yung faith na tinatawag. Yun yung mga example ng immovable faith. That whatever circumstances that you have, di ba? Alam nyo, God is interested not just in fulfilling our needs, but our dreams. Dahil patandaan niya, not only your needs, but your dreams. Not only necessity, but luxury. Kaya niya ibigay sa'yo. You just need to flourish and foster yung puso mo. Unayin mo lang yung puso mo na naniniwala ka na natin pala tayo sa Kanya. Yung hindi ka matitinag what happened. Oh? Whatever happened. Tandaan niyo po, Jesus Christ, our God, is not Roman Catholic. He's 
not Baptist, he's not Muslim, he's not Pentecost, he's not Filipino, he's not Arabic, he's not, he's not Russia, he's not America. He is God. Amen. He is God who is sitting in the throne in heaven. Wala siya pipiliin sa atin. Wala siya itatangi. Lahat pwede niya bigay sa iyo at sa akin. Amen. And when he do it, when he plan to do it, wala akong makapigil. Magiging committed ang Diyos sa iyo kung papapasokin mo siya sa buhay mo. Hindi yung pang may kailangan ka lang. Tama? Yung makikipag-start ka ng relationship with Him because God loves you, you should love Him back. Lagi ko sinasabi, mahal ka ng Diyos. Ang relasyon nagsisimula, pag binahal mo siya. Paan mo siya mamahalin? Yung Friday ng umaga, kahit puyat ka, magsisimba ka. Yung Friday ng umaga, kahit madaling araw ka ng umuwi kagabi because it's your job. Natapos ka ng 6 o'clock ng umaga, darating ka ng 9 o'clock dito because you love Him. Kapag sinabi mo, basa ka ng Bible, magbabasa ka because you love Him. Tama? Na sinabi natin, mag-training ka para one day maging matatag kang Christian, mag-training ka kapatid, hindi mo titigilan yan. Kasi kailangan mo yan. That's for you, not for us. Tama? Training is for you. Kahit saan ka makarating, kahit saan ka makarating, kahit umuwi ka ng Pilipinas, you can use that training that you will get from here para i-minister ang pamilya mo. Para maniwala sila ng may Diyos at makikita yung pagbubago sa buhay mo. Kapatid, your relatives, your loved ones, your family will not believe you unless nakita nila na nagbago pa. Hindi pwede nagsisimba ka lang. Kailangan matutunan mo kung sino si Kristo. Makilala mo siya sa buhay mo. Ano ba yung benefits ng cross na yan? Bakit siya nagpapakong dyan at matala ng Diyos sa heaven ako po? Bakit bumaba? Tama? Lahat yun yun. Kailangan mo malaman. So you need to attend the training. So that your dreams will be fulfilled by God. Amen? Now, meron pong gusto sabihin sa inyo. Don't ever ever think that God cannot provide your needs and your dreams. He can. Meron pong istorya. Now, there was one prince, no po, in a GCC country, okay? He wants to learn how to play golf. So he invited one of the finest and good uh, pro, uh, professional golfer from America. He invited him. Come in my country. I will, uh, I will uh, give you a uh, play ticket. Please come here and I would like to learn how to play golf. So for three weeks, that professional guy was here, or oh, was there in their country. And this prince, the pop prince, yeah, prince, uh, shake, shake, yeah. So he wants to learn how to play golf. So in three weeks, he learned how to play golf. And after three weeks, he said to that guy, you know, because I was blessed, I was, I know how to play golf now, you give me your time. I just want to ask you, what else do you need? And then the guy said, no, I don't need anything, you pay me a lot, you pay me twice, and uh, I enjoy it, and uh, thank you, I don't need anything. Okay, I will take you in my private jet, going back to America. And while we are in the jet, I want you to think, what do you want more? Because it's insult to us if I'm asking you what do you want and you're ignoring it. I want you to think of it. So while the plane is flying, going to the US, and they get touched down in America, I said, okay, my friend, it's time to go. Thank you so much. But again, what else do you need? Tell me. So itong tao to, I, I, sabi niya kay, sabi niya to sa Prince, I, I'm doing well. Actually, I don't need, the, I don't need anything from you. Because I get the money I get. But, okay, just, just for him to say something, give me a gold club. And the prince says, okay. Masala. See you. And then, they separate ways. After three weeks, this professional golf player received an envelope, an official letter in an envelope. So he said, Paano nagtasya yung gold club dito sa letter na to? Ayun yung hiningi ko. And when he opened that letter, the prince gave him, instead of stick, a real stake, the expensive gold club in America was given to him. Amen? And this is what our God is. Yung hinihingi mo sa kanya na maliit, kaya niya ibigay sa'yo na mas malaki. Amen. 
Wag mo lang siya i-ignore sa buhay. Are you with me? God can provide whatever you need. Time is time of what you ever need. You just have this faith, immovable faith, that God can provide your needs in your wants. Tama? Amen? So, no, tingnan ito. Sabi dito si Jeremiah, Before I form you in the womb, I know you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. Now, all of us here in this hall, and everybody here in this life, before the Lord, or before your parents met, Amen, are you with me? Before your mother and father get married, and have those intimate relationships, and become pregnant, God knows you already. He knows you. He sacrificed you already. Ito ang problema natin. Ito, listen to this. God knows me. God sacrificed me. Pero iba yung focus ng utak ko. Ano yung focus ng utak ko? Magpatangas ng ilong. Di ba? Magpayaman. Magpaganda ng katawan. Uh, magpumilala ng maraming tao. Mahalin yung girlfriend ko. Mahalin yung boyfriend ko. I-date ko sila. Maglamierda ako kasama yung barkada ko. Hindi yun ang purpose ng Diyos sa'yo. Nakapokus na masyado sa iba't ibang bagay na hindi kasama sa focus or sa plan ng God sa buhay mo. Kaya hindi mangyari ang plano ng Diyos because your mindset was focused on other things. That is not belongs to God. But the Lord has sacrificed you. So the time na pupunta ka rito, nangyari ang plano ng Diyos sa buhay mo. The time na pupunta ka at nagpatuloy ka, nangyari yung plano ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Tama ba? The only problem is God knows you before He formed you in the womb of your mother. But your life is very, very far from the past, from the plans of God. Ang layo. Ay, hindi mo maramdaman yung pagmamahal ng Diyos at yung plano niya sa buhay mo. Because ikaw mismo, ayaw mo, pasako. But ang katotohanan niyan, God knows you before you were formed in the womb of your mother. Tama ba? So, huwag po natin bigyan na so much attention yung mga bagay na hindi parang hindi galing sa Diyos. Tama? Nagising ka one day, gusto mo magparatokin ang ilong mo. Mamaya, madisgarasya ka pa. Pag dinatokin, pagtanggal mo ng balot, nakatikpas na doon. E di pagmula, lulud ka. Tama? Yung hindi na mapakali, yung, you were, listen, you were created, created wonderfully and fearfully by God. Okay na yan ang itsura mo yan. Hindi nagkamali ang Diyos sa'yo. Hindi ka aksidente. You're not experiment. Before I form you, God knows you. And sanctified you. You are not experiment, kapatid. Kaya nga sabihin mo na yung nanay at tatay mo, naghiwalay na buntis lang yung nanay mo. Yan pa rin yun. Before I form you, He knows you very well. So kaya na yung itsura mo. Yan na yan. Wala ka na gawa sa'yo siya dyan. Tama? Ang importante, gawa ka ng Diyos, galing ka sa Diyos. Yun ang importante doon. Tignan mo yung katabi mo. At ang ng Diyos yan, tama? So perfect na yan sa tingin ng Diyos. Wala nang babaguhin dyan. Ang problema lang, ang thinking mo kasi, ang focus mo kasi, so much to yourself, kaya ang dami mo gusto baguhin. Sometimes, nagising ka, gusto mo na maging lalaki. Gusto mo na maging babae. Gusto ko. Hindi naman yun ang plano ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Nung kinawin ka niya, lalaki, kahit hindi ka pag yung mga babae ka lang yun. Kaya ito yung gawin, lalaki na pa rin. Tama? Are you listening to me? Ang Diyos gusto pa ang sanctify, pero ikaw ang ayaw. Ano yun po, the time that the Lord has called me. Ano called me? Get na rin, first time in the church. Nagpatuloy lang ako. Bakit? Kasi very religious person ako. Pero nakita ko ito. Wala ako dito. Yung mga ito po ito ko dyan, hindi ko alam yan. Pero nagsisimba lang ako. Hindi ko alam. At sabi ko sa misis ko na, the first time na ito may balik tayo naman para may sense yung pinag-uusapan doon. Tama? Bakit hindi magkakaroon ng sense ay word of God yung tinuturo natin dito? Amen. Kung hindi ka maniniwala, it's up to you. Tama? Lahat tayo gusto natin makarating ng langit. Tama? Nasa ka ba? Sino gusto mo karating ng langit? Amen! O, oh, may church lang. Hindi ka makapunta. Langit pa. Ang langit mo na, kapatid. Practice mo muna makarating si church. Amen! Practice mo muna yung before I form you, God knows you, eh? Sanctify you. Unless you walk 
On the plan of God in your life. Kapatid, walang mayayari sa buhay mo. Tama ba? Amen. Are you with me? Are you listening? Amen. Now, I want to give you a story here in the Bible. Quickly. Pakibasa ka sa Sister Nicole. One story. One story. Sige po, pakibasa po. Sister Nicole, please. Now the donkey of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to his son, Saul, Please take one of the servants with you, and arise. Go and look for the donkeys. So he passed through the mountains of Ephraim and through the land of Shalisha, but they did not find them. They, then they passed through the land of Sha'alim, and they were not there. Then he passed through the land of Benjamites, but they did not find them. Okay, listen. How many of you know Saul? Amen. Amen lang ang amen, para mabilis. Amen. Kahit first time meron, amen lang, para mabilis, okay? So, si Saul po, is pinadala ng tatay niya ng pangalan si Kish. Bakit? Kasi nawawala ang donkey. Nawawala ang donkey. So, now the case of Kish, Saul's father were lost. And Kish said to his son, Saul, please take one of the servants with you. And then I should go and look for the donkey. So he passed through the mountains of Ephraim and through the land of Shalisha, but they didn't find them. Then they passed through the land of Shalim, and they were not there. Then they passed through the land of Benjamin, but they didn't find them. So we have one character in the Bible named Saul. All in his mind is to find the missing donkey. Are you with me? Lahat ng laman ng utak niya in that day is to find the missing donkey. Actually, pag binasa niya, ang dami niya pang pinuntahan looking for the donkey. Yun lang alam na utak niya, looking for the donkey. Where is the donkey, my father? Where? The donkey, where are you? Where are you? He went there to, 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 to passport roads, went to Najda, he went to Musapa, he cannot find the missing donkey. All in his mind is the missing donkey. But see what happened. The next. And he said to him, Look now, there is in the city a man of God, and he is an honorable man. All that he says surely comes to pass. So let us go there. Perhaps he can show us the way that we should go. The servant who bring na, gina, na sinama niya sa kanyang pagkakot sa donkey. Remember the servant? The servant says, Don't lose your hope. Mama. We cannot find the donkey. Okay, let's go. Look now, there is in this city a man of God and he's an honorable man. All that he says surely come to pass. So let us go there. Perhaps he can show us the way that we should go. Saul was having a donkey life. Amen? Ang gusto na lang yung donkey. Ito ngayon. Meron siyang kasamang servant na gusto siyang dalit kay Samuel. Alam mo kapatid? Bago ka nakarating sa church, meron ka rin donkey thinking. Meron lang ginamit si Lord kaya ka nandito ngayon. Amen. 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 Yung mga first timer ngayon, lahat tayo may donkey life. Dinala ka ngayon dito, Saul was trying to find the missing donkey, but his servant says, go, come with me. Huwag ka mawala ng pag-asa, may kita natin niya. Let's go to a man of God. Then, what happened? Pakibasa ulit? Now the Lord has told Samuel in his ear the day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow about this time, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. And you will shall anoint him a commander over my people Israel, that he may save my people from the hand of the Palestines. For I have looked upon my people, because their cry has come to me. So when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said to him, There he is, the man of whom I spoke to you. This one shall reign over my people. Amen. A person called Saul was having a donkey life. <coughs> the servant with him was used to go with Prophet Samuel. Tama? At kung titinan yung mabuti, bago sila nagpunta roon, at sabi pa ni Saul, I don't have anything here with me. O paano tayo pupunta roon? Anong bibigyan natin doon sa man of God? At sabi yung sir, but I have something here and we will give it to the man of God. Don't worry, let's just go with me. Sometimes yung mga naging bayad sa'yo, sila pa nagbayad ng taxi. Ano yun? Para makarating ka lang. Tama? Sila pa nagbayad ng taxi, pinagpray ka pa niyan, ginisi ka ng maaga. Para lang makarating ka rito. And see what happened to Saul. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his, uh, in his ear, the day before Saul came. Bago pa dumating si Saul, because he was formed in the womb of his mother, because he was sanctified by the Lord, bago siya dumating, tomorrow about this time, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. And then Saul, 
And you shall anoint him commander over my people Israel, that he may save my people from the hand of the Philistines, for I have looked upon my people because their cry has come to me. So when someone saw the hole, the Lord said to him, There he is, the man of whom I spoke to you. This one shall reign over my people. Dahil yeah. thinking, naging hari ang Israel. Why? Because he agreed to the one who invited him. Mga ah, kapatid, may posting ako nakita sometimes sa Facebook. Kapag hindi-invite ka sa church, huwag ka lang tumanggi kasi para sa iyo. Amen. Tama? Ano pa sa mga? Kung invite ka sa church, ang problema lang, ayaw ka talaga sumama kasi ayaw mo yung Diyos. Pero nagpag may problema ka. Halos lumood ka sa lahat ng altar dahil may problema ka. Pero pag wala, kaya sometimes ang sarap mag-invite ng may problema eh. Alam mo yan, yung mga walang trabaho, isang sabi mo lang yan, darating yan. Na-experience nyo, di ba? Yeah. Hindi nila alam, before they were born, sanctified na sila, yun yung nila ni Lord. Dumating siya sa presensya niya. Amen. Doon sa, sa, sa church, ang tinuturo word of God. Yung nakasulat sa Bible, eh, this is what happened exactly to Saul. Sa iyo sa katabi mo, may calling ka, kapatid. May calling ka. Alamin mo lang. Tama? Alam niyo ba ako, ako myself, myself. I have accepted the Lord. I was the first timer in the church in 2002. 17 years ago, from that time until now, I was a donkey thinking too. Ang thinking ko lang donkey, donkey. Nasaan ang donkey? Nasaan ang donkey? I don't even know that I was sanctified by God and I was called. At dumating yung tawag sa akin, nagpatuloy lang ako hanggang sa nakilala ko ng Gusto ng Panginoon. At kung yun nangyari sa akin, hindi ko posible na mangyari sa inyo. Ang gagawin mo lang, walk sa calling ng Panginoon. Magsipag ka. Hanapin mo yung presensya ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Para yung dreams mo at dreams ng Diyos sa buhay mo mangyari. Ang gusto niya talaga ay sanctified ka. Ang gusto niya pag namatay ka, kasama ka niya sa heaven. Ang problema, ayaw mo. Tapos pag namatay ka na, gusto mo sa heaven. Akala mo, ganun lang. Magbabara ko tuwing weekend. Iinom ako. Punta ako, barkada ko. Lahat ang kalokohan gagawin ko. Pero pag namatay ako nun, gusto ko sa heaven. Wala akong ganun. The Bible is very clear. Nasa sa Bible ng requirements kung paano ako pupunta ng heaven. Akala natin, mga namatay natin kay Bigan, mga namatay, namatay natin sa mahal sa buhay na sa heaven. Sorry to say, your job is to equip yourself and share it to your mother, to your father, to your daughter, to your son, to your brothers and sister, to your family. Kaya sabi ni Lord, uh, mag-evangelize ka sa iyo, Jerusalem, and Jerusalem, yung pamilya mo. And that is the reason why you are here. To fulfill that calling of God and bring your family to the presence of God. So kung paano magdadala mo, ayaw mag-training. Nag-encounter ka na, ayaw ituloy. Ituloy mo yung training mo. Sabi ni Pastor, kami dumaan sa si training. Lahat tayo dadaan sa si training. Tama? Have faith that God will fulfill your destiny that He prepared for you. Amen. Imo mo po yung faith. Magkaroon ka ng faith na dahil dito ako sa church, nagtitraining ako, umatid ako ng cell group, nagpapasa ako ng Bible kasi one day, dadalhin ako ni Lord doon sa dream niya for me. Amen. Yung fulfill na destiny ko na galing sa Panginoon. Amen. Lahat tayo may destiny. Ang dami ang pinagdadaanan ngayon, huwag mong intindihin yan. Sumunod ka sa yapak na gusto ng Panginoon sa buhay mo. Amen. Yung consequences, yung, yung, yung nangyayari sa buhay mo ngayon is just an event of your life. But hindi yan ang destiny mo. Hindi yan ang destination mo, kapatid. The more that you will invite Jesus in your life, the more na makikita mo yung destiny mo kung saan ka pupunta. Tama? Amen. Okay, second. Trust in what God said in the face of what God has not yet done yet. Ano yung sabihin dyan? Ano yung sabihin dyan sa pangalawa? Now, listen to this. When Mary approached Jesus, as I said earlier, when Mary approached Jesus, with regards to that wine problem, simple lang ang sinabi niya, they have no wine. Tama? Ang sabi niya kay Jesus, they have no wine. Wala silang wine, ubusin sila ng wine. Now, saan tayo bibili? Baka sarado na ang sabi ni Lebe. Wala tayong bibilan. Tandaan mo natin. I want you to take note of this. 
Kagaya niya sabi ko, guest lang sila, hindi sila sponsor. So bakit yung problema yun? Hindi na dapat niyo po si Jesus. Bakit ka nalang itami si Jesus? Anong pakailan po dyan yung naubusan sila ng handa? Tama? Guest lang ako, kakain lang ako. Baka during that time, nag-enjoy si Lord sa kanyang kinakain, lumapit si Mary at sabi, wala nang wine. Kaya sabi ni Lord, anong gagawin ko dyan? Hindi pa ako ready dyan. Hindi ko pa tayo. Okay? Now, that story, down to that story that I show you, I want you to see this. Pakabasa ko nila. Down to that verse 11. Sige po. This beginning of signs Jesus did in the Cana of Galilee and manifested His glory and His disciples believed in Him. Now, I want you to to, to meditate the word with me. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested His glory and His disciples believed in Him. I want to tell you something here. When Mary approaches Jesus, where did he get that boldness and where did she get the courage to approach Jesus about water making it wine? Saan niya nakuha yun? Yung courage niya. Now, ito yung pinakita sa akin nito. This beginning of signs, Jesus did in Kenya of Galilee. Sabihin niyo, beginning. As I said earlier, this is the first time that Jesus did a miracle. Tama? Sa Bible, when you read the Bible, sa four Gospels, may kita mo yung appearance ni Lord. Nung baby siya, sa mind girl. Tama? Number two, yung dinalo siya ng three kids sa bahay, yung child na siya. By the way, ang turo sa atin, Si Jesus, dinalaw ng mga kings, si tatong kings, saan? Sa sabsaban. Pagbasa kayo ng Bible, hindi po. Child na siya, nang dinalaw, nasa bahay siya. Mga turong ano yun, turong ko, itong barbero. Doon tayo lumaki eh. Kaya nung pag hindi niya nagbabasa ng Bible, ignorante ka eh. Sa bahay na po siya pinuntahan, child na siya, hindi na baby. Number three, he was 12 years old, sharing the word of God to those people next to the temple, right? Tatlong appearance si Jesus. Pang-apat, yung baptism niya na with John the Baptist. He was 30 years old at the time. And the Bible says, this is the first sign that Jesus did a miracle in Kena Galilee. Now, ang tanong ko kanina, where did Mary get the boldness to ask Jesus about a miracle while she didn't experience Jesus making a miracle? Are you with me? Saan niya pinuha yung kanooban na yun na Jesus, wala na silang wine, mag-magic ka, kailangan ng wine. Saan niya pinuha yung boldness na yun at yung courage ni Jesus na gagawa siya ng miracle while when she was born, until that time, wala siyang miracle na ginawa. Faith! Correct! How did she get the faith? Ha? Paano siya nagkira ng faith? Jesus. How? Dahil what? I don't know why. You remember that day was Mary is doing something. Naglala ba yata? May sasampay. Biglang si Angel Gabriel nag-show up. You remember that? Ano yung sabi? Mary, you will be pregnant. Ano sabi ni Mary? How it will happen? I don't have a husband. I don't have a boyfriend at all. Meron siyang boyfriend pala. Si Joseph. Kasi ano na sila nun? They are betrothed already. I don't have a husband. How it will happen that I will become a pregnant? Rejoice, sabi ni Gabriel. Angel Gabriel. Rejoice. Because yung ipanganak mo is a Messiah. The Savior of the world. And from that time onwards, hanggang pinalak niya yung baby, hanggang sa dumating ang Jesus, hanggang sa dumaki siya, hanggang sa time na yan, pinanghawakan niya yung salita ng Diyos na yun. Yung salita ni Gabriel to him. That that baby, that boy with you, na alagaan mo for 30 years, will be the savior of the world. That is the time Mary got that courage for her to ask Jesus, to make that water into wine. Even though hindi niya pa alam na tabal talaga pa ito yung Messiah, habang lumalaki siya, talaga pa ito, inalagaan niya for 30 years. Wala na lang nakita magic na ginawa nito eh. Wala na lang himalang ginawa ito. Simula yung pinakalang hanggang ngayon eh. Hello, are you with me? Wala, wala siyang ginawa. Pagkatapos 
nung first time na nito na may gusto siyang pagawa, lumapit siya kay Jesus. Why? Because of the promises of Angel Gabriel to him. Because of the word of God. Tama? Kaya po ito, malaki magagawa ito sa buhay mo. Ito magpapatatag ng faith mo. The word of God. O paano mo i-approach ang isang Jesus na hindi mo malalakita na gumawa ng anumang miracle? Because of what? Angel Gabriel told her that that baby in your womb will be the Messiah. God. Emmanuel with us. God is with us. Emmanuel. Tama? Amen. She holds the promises of God to her. Right? Kaya meron siya tinatawag na faith. Kaya yung word of God, yan naman papatatag niya yung faith. Yung salita ng Diyos, yung salita ni Gabriel, kaya ni Mary. Tama mo ba? Are you with me? Now, sabi ko rito, do not let your faith be destroyed, but what God has not done. Kung meron ka mga pinagdadaanan ngayon, wala kang trabaho. Delay na lang yung sweldo mo. Ang nanay mo may sakit. Ang anak mo nagkaroon ng bread tumor. Ang nanay mo nagkaroon ng bread tumor. What the hell is it? Huwag mo pabayaan na yung faith mo masyake dahil yung Diyos hindi pa ginagawa yung bagay na para sa'yo. Dahil ang tagal mo na naghihintay, you're waiting for so long na yung trabaho niya, ang tagal mo na pinaghihintay, hindi pa dumarating. Na yung healing ng anak mo, matagal mo na pinagpapray, hindi pa rin dumarating. Don't grab your eyes dahil meron isang miracle kang hinihintay at nawala yung faith mo. Dahil hindi pa dumarating. Tama? Magtiwala ka na kaya ng Panginoon na gawin yung lahat ng sinulat dito na promise siya sa'yo at sa akin. Are you with me? Amen. Immovable faith. Unshakable faith. This is what you need. Amen. Are you with me? Next. Pakibasa po ito yung John 2 for 8. Sige. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing twenty or thirty gallons at least. Jesus said to, the, to them, Fill the water pot, pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Draw some out now, and take it to the master of the feast. And they looked it. Okay. I want you to notice something here again, the third one. This is a joy. Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Can you repeat that? My hour has not yet come. My hour has not yet come. So, his mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. This is something here. When Jesus says, kumakain ako ng bulan ng ito, nistorbo mo ako eh. My hour has not yet come. Tama? Amen. Bakit pinaggagawa mo na ako ng miracle? My hour has not yet come. So, Mary, because of her trust, to Jesus, he just, he just turn away and go to the servants and say, whatever he says to you, do it. Parang ano, parang sobra-sobra faith, sobra-sobra tiwala meron siya kay Jesus. Nagagawin niya yun, tama? Amen. Hindi niya sinabi na, okay, Jesus, I will come back after two hours. Maybe you're eating. And after I come back, maybe you're ready. Or maybe I will wait after two weeks. Or maybe I will wait after two months. Ganun ba yung ginawa ni Mary? No! When she said, Jesus, there is no wine. Sabi ni Jesus, my time has not yet come. He just turned and tinawag niyo mga servants. Come on. Whatever he says to you, do it. Now, there were set, set the six water pots of stone according to the manner of preparation of the Jews containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. What are yon? Jesus said to them, Ano yung sabi niya kanina? My time has not yet come. Are you with me? And then later on, one moment he said no, one moment he said yes. And he said, Jesus said to them, fill the water first with water, and they filled them into the brim. And he said to them, draw some up now and take it to the master of the feast. Meaning, nung sinabi ni Mary na, okay, servants, just do whatever he wants to say, because he said no, that's not my time yet. Pero a moment, just a moment, Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water and then fill them into the brim and said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the peace. Meaning, nung sinabi niya punuin, nung sinabi niya kumuha kayo, why na yun? Ibigay mo na doon sa mga master of the peace. Kasi yun na yung finest wine na matitikman nila. Now, my concern here, my point here is like this. Jesus, God's will never changes, but God's time does. 
yung plano ng Diyos sa iyo, hindi mo babago. Pero yung timing niya, hindi mo babago. Kung sinabi niya, bukas may trabaho ka na, o bukas wala ka pang trabaho, pero bukas din, ng hapon, may trabaho ka na. Amen. Yung plano niya mangyayari, pero yung changes ng timing, sa kanya palagi. Kaya when you pray, it's always God's will. Amen. Hindi pwedeng will mo, hindi pwedeng Lord. Gusto ko magtrabaho sa Mayo Hotel, may opening sila. Gusto ko Lord, ngayon na, now. It will not happen because our prayer depends on God's will. Depends on God's timing. Dapat hindi naman wala sa isip mo yun na lahat ng gusto mo nakadepende sa Diyos. Hindi sa iyo. Yung plano na na gumawa ng wine, nandun yun. Kung sinagawin yun. Pero right now, kumakain pa ako ng bulalo. Teka muna, hindi pa kayo. Pero just a moment, just a blink of an eye, sige na nga, punoy niyo ng tubig yan, gabi na natin. Alam niyo ba yung timing ni Lord ang importante? Gusto mo na mag-asawa, 40 ka na, hanggang ngayon wala pa. Okay lang yan. Timing pa rin ni Lord. Huwag ka magmadali. Alam niyo, ang pag-asawa raw, hindi parang may hita ka rin, kubo, tas luluwa. Mas maganda mag-asawa ka sa God's timing, kesa naman mag-asawa ka na gusto mo lang, hindi gusto ni Diyos, ng Diyos, na nangyari, parang ako muna ng puto ng bato na kinukok mo sa ulo mo. Tama po ba? Tandaan niyo po, pag krisyano ka na at nagbabasa ka na ng Bible, ang pag-asawa, wala na sabihan. Ang biyenan, wala na palitan. Kaya isipin mo mabuti yung mapapakasawa mo sino. Pag-pray mo yan, huwag kang magmadali, 40 ka na huwag kang mag-alala, pagdating mo sa kwenta, makapag-asawa ka rin. Pag-pray mo lang, eh ba, pastor, eh pastor, si kwenta mo, sabi nila yung papakasama kung may anak na. Basta God's will, okay lang, tama? Kesa naman hindi God's will, binata nga, isak na mo sa ulo. Eh habang buhay yun. Tama mo ba? You with me? Mga kapatid, naintindihan niyo ba siya sabi ko? Now, tingnan natin yung God's will na hindi nagbabago, pero yung timing niya nagbabago. Maaari gusto gusto mo na magkatrabaho ngayon, just wait for a little while. Because yung no niya ngayon, ba may yes na yun. Pero yung gusto niya, hindi mo babago yun. Are you with me? Are you listening, mga kapatid? So sabi ko rito, your season will change, but God will never change. Let's brother Andy. Let's brother Andy. Hindi mo nakita yung message ko sa'yo. As a music team, please, please come. Okay lang, okay lang. Please come. Your season will change, but your God, but God will never change. How many of you believe this? How many of you believe that mababagong magyayari sa buhay mo, mababago na mababago yan, pero yung plano ng Diyos na tinawag ka, na sinatified ka, na before you were formed in the womb, He knows you, hindi mo babago yan. Tama? Kaya, you just need to have that immovable faith in you. Kailangan mo meron ka ng faith para kung mangyari ng plano ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Tama po ba? Are you with me? Are you listening? Narinig niyo po ba siya sabi ko? Now, I just want to give you a story in the Bible. One story before we close. Just to defend this, your season will change. But God will never change. Can you read it? Love me. One, two, three, go. Just want to give you one story in the Bible. Do you know Joseph? Joseph the dreamer? Alam niyo po si Joseph, Joseph was given a coat by his father, a coat. And that colorful coat, meaning he was the favorite son. Do you know the story, right? And this coat symbolizes like my father gave me a car while my brother is driving a bicycle. Yun po yun, sabi ng quote na yun, na binigay ng tatay niya. He was the favorite, Joseph. And this quote was taken away from him and he was thrown in an empty digger. Dig. Tama? It was taken from him. He was clothed with this quote, but it was taken from him yung mga kapatid niya, nilagyan ng blood at sinabi na namatay siya, tama? 
Ito yung istorya. Let us have it. Then, after that, he was sitting in Potiphar's house. He was given another coat. Ano yun? To take care of his household. But his wife, the beautiful wife of Potiphar, again took that coat from him, and Joseph was put in the prison. You know what I'm saying, right? When he was in prison, he became a prisoner. But Pharaoh, in his dreams, gave him another coat, and that coat take him outside the prisoner and became the governor of Egypt. It took him how many years before the dreams happened in his life? Marami siyang pinagdaanan. There are so many trials na kanyang dinaanan. Binenta siya ng kanyang mga kapatid. Lalo pa siyang patayin. Then, binenta siya. Ginawa siya ang servant. Ni Potipar sa bahay niya. And then, he was placed inside a jail. So, seasons will change. But the plan of God to Joseph never changed. Pero, I have a dream. And the dreams was well by Joseph. Amen. He was taken out of the prison and became the ruler of Egypt. Imagine that. From someone na itinapon sa balon at papatayin na, someone na inilagay sa prison, sa prison, sometime na isang, isang ginawang katiwala, it changes. But the plan of God, to make him the ruler of Egypt, never change. Maharin sa oras na to, ang dami ng problema pinagdadaanan. Parang feeling mo, hindi ka na makaahon. Sunod-sunod, wala kang trabaho, wala kang sweldo, kailangan ng pera ng nanay, tatay mo, may sakit yung anak mo. Parang hindi ka na makaahon. You feel that you are in your low valley. But sometimes naman, sunod-sunod, na swerte. So, it's not a blessing. Na-promote ka na, nagka-boyfriend ka pa, at yung boyfriend mo, nadala ko pa sa church, praise God. Tama? Gumanda ang sweldo mo, na-promote yung boyfriend mo, sunod-sunod. Sometimes po, buhay ganun. It will change. Season or run of season. Pero gusto ko sabihin sa inyo, ang plano ng Diyos sa buhay mo yung babaw. Darating ang time mo. Darating yung victory mo. You just need this movable faith in you that God and His calling in your life will happen. Mangyayari yan. Huwag ka lang mawala ng pananampalataya sa Diyos. Amen. Always think that God can do something, can do a miracle in your life. So because we believe, because we have the faith that God is God, and is still sitting on the throne, He deserves your worship to He deserves your praise. He deserves your service. He deserves your time. Tama? Alam niyo po, isang bagay na pinakamahirap na ibigay sa Diyos? Ay. Pero pag may kailangan ka, kahit napiyat ka, may time ka sa Kanya. Pero pag wala, yan ang pinakamahirap na ibigay kay God. Ay. Oras. Paano ko bibigyan ng oras sa Diyos sa hindi naman sinasagot ang panalangin ko? God will never change. Your season will change. Always remember, God will never never change. Baka nang hinihintay mo trabaho, isang hakbang ka na lang, na andyan na, gumitaw ka pa. Lagi mo kong tatandaan, God's plan is always true. His promises in the Bible is always true. He said, I will not leave you, I will not forsake you. I have a plan for you, to prosper you, and not to harm you. To give you peace in your life, mga kapatid. Sabi ni Jesus, I came to give you an abundant life. When you say abundance, you don't need anything else. 
Ito na lahat. Repackage na, amen? Do you think Jesus deserves all the glory? Amen. Do you think that? Can you all stand, please? Can you all stand? Sa plano ng Diyos sa buhay mo, always remember, Jesus deserves a glory. He deserves it. He deserves it. Hallelujah. He deserves it. He deserves it. Father in heaven, this morning we want to thank you that you have given us an example of an unshakable faith, of an immovable faith. Today, Lord, we learn that whatever happened in our lives, we just need to have that faith in us that, that life will go pass through because of you. That your mission in our lives, that your plans and that your love in our lives will happen. That our destiny in you, one day it will happen. Mangyayari po yun, Panginoon. We just need to have that immovable faith. And today, Lord God, as we learn from you, as we heard from you, we pray that these days will give glory to your name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your own. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. Lord, you